Indo Pacific. I request all of you to please settle down. We are running late. We don't want to be late for cocktails at the end of it. I hope that is incentive enough. I request all of you to please start settling down. I welcome all of you back to this special session of the India Defence Conclave. This session will focus on cooperation and collaboration in the Indo-Pacific. May I request Nitin Gokhale, Vice Admiral Dinesh Tripathi, CNC Western Command, Indian Navy, and Lieutenant General Greg Bilton, Chief of Joint Operations Australia, to please come up on stage. So let us start this session with a special video message from Gilberto Teodoro Jr., Secretary of National Defense Philippines. But before that, let me quickly introduce him to all of you. Gilbo Gilberto Teodoro is the Secretary of the Department of National Defense. He is the Principal Assistant and Advisor to the President on Defense Matters and exercises overall authority, direction and control over the DND offices and its bureaus. The Honorable Secretary has also pursued the strengthening of bilateral and multilateral security and defense cooperation with both regional and extra-regional states to further peace and combat non-traditional security threats. Furthermore, he actively pursued the integration of various international protocols on disaster risk management, assisted in capacity building of sectors, and coordination of response and rehabilitation efforts. He could not be here with us. We had invited him. He could not travel to Delhi, but he has sent us a special video message and we are going to play that for you. After which, we will have a panel discussion. I will introduce the two speakers to you and we will have a panel discussion. May I request the video message of the Secretary of National Defense, Philippines, to be played? Ladies and gentlemen, Namaste. Allow me to acknowledge and greet defense and military officials of India and other participants present in today's India Defense Conclave. I express my appreciation to Mr. Nitin A. Gokale, founder and editor-in-chief of Bharat Shahti, for inviting me as the guest of honor at the inauguration session of this, India, this year's India Defense Conclave. The Philippines and India both play a vital role in promoting a rules-based international order, strengthening cooperation among like-minded countries, upholding existing international law, and securing a free, open, and inclusive Indo-Pacific region where we respect international law, customary, and treaty-based, and secure for the whole world, uh, unhampered and unhindered passage, freedom of navigation, international overflights in what the world has long recognized as free and open international airspace. I welcome the substantive outcomes of the fourth Philippines-India Joint Defense Cooperation Committee and the second service-to-service -service meetings convened at the level of our defense and armed forces institutions last March in New Delhi. The Indo-Pacific region faces diverse security challenges and intensified interstate issues ranging for, from social, political and to traditional and non-traditional concerns, including potential flashpoints of conflict and confrontation. We believe that the Indo-Pacific region should not be defined solely by major power rivalries and that regional countries such as us, 
Philippi the Philippines and India should play a bigger role in shaping the narrative and future of the region. We, at the end of the day, are the ones most affected. So we should have a greater say. And both India and the Philippines working together can have a more resonant voice in the, the whole world. Because this, although the Indo-Pacific region is a part of the global commons. What happens here, as we know, has uh, vital uh, effects in the global supply chains and the security complex complexion of the world. The Philippines is gradually shifting its focus from internal security to building a credible defense posture for external defense. We are assured of India's commitment to be a reliable partner in supporting the Philippines. And we are waiting for the timely delivery of the Philippine Navy shore-based anti-ship missile systems project from BrahMos and other defense equipment which we procured from India. We recognize India's success in cultivating its domestic resources to cater to the needs of its armed forces, as well as India's indigenization program of its defense industry, which we could learn as we pursue our self-reliant defense posture. Our country's strategic locations offer a unique vantage point to safeguard vital sea lanes of communication and trade routes that are essential for the global economy, prosperity, and security. We recognize India's efforts to guarantee freedom of navigation, protect choke points, end conflicts amicably, and confront unconventional security concerns in the region. With the signing of the Philippines-India Agreement Concerning Defense Cooperation in 2006, India remains our longest formal defense partner in South Asia. The department highly encourages further interaction among our military personnel through high-level exchange visits, information sharing, and education and training exchanges. In the coming years, we can explore other areas of mutual concern, such as disaster resilience and other non-traditional threats, which are also under my remit as Secretary of National Defense and Chairman of the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. We can also uh, explore areas of mutual partnerships in technology transfer and developing information technology and other cyber capabilities and management and other cyber tools in the future. Amidst the current and emerging security challenges in the region, the volatility of the region and the world as a whole, it is our hope that our defense relations will strengthen in order to secure the stability of both our countries and the region because of our shared commitment to respect the rule of law in international affairs. Once again, thank you for the honor and my apologies once again for not being able to join you personally, but I look forward to engaging with each and every one of you personally in the near future. Thank you and have a pleasant day to all of us. One of you personally in the near future. Thank you and have a pleasant day. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. That was the Secretary of National Defense, Philippines, Gilberto Teodoro Jr. I would like to introduce our two panelists to you before handing over the session to our moderator, Nitin Gokhale. Vice Admiral Dinesh Tripathi, CNC Western Naval Command. Vice Admiral Tripathi assumed command of the Premier Western Naval Command on the 1st of March this year. 
His various command tenures provided him the opportunity to fulfill di military, diplomatic, constabulary, and benign roles of the Indian Navy. These include Director of Naval Operations, during which he ensured that the Navy remained a combat-ready, cohesive, and credible force. From June 2021 to February 2023, the flag officer also served as Chief of Personnel, and in this appointment, he also played an instrumental role in the induction of women into the Indian Navy across all branches and cadres. Admiral Tabhati, thank you so much for being, agreeing to be a part of this panel. We are honored to have with us Lieutenant General Greg Bilton, Chief of Joint Operations, Australia. <clears throat> he is the Chief of Joint Operations at Headquarters Joint Operations Command, responsible for ADF operations and joint exercises, both domestically and internationally, uh, as directed by the Chief of the Defense Force, in order to achieve the government's strategic priorities. In carrying out this mission, Lieutenant General Bilton is responsible for the planning, control, and conduct of all Australia's military campaigns, operations, joint exercises, and other activities in order to meet Australia's national objectives. Can I have a round of applause, please, for the two panelists? Thank you very much, General Bilton. And now I hand over the session to Nitin Gokhale. Thank you. Thank you, Nilanjana. I think uh, we couldn't have had uh, a better spread of uh, speakers for this session, uh, talking about Indo-Pacific, Indian Ocean. We started off with a country which is normally not in India's consciousness, uh, this, except for the fact that in the past couple of years, after BrahMos missiles were sold to Philippines, suddenly people have woken up to uh, what Philippines is and where Philippines is, what is its importance. So we were uh, lucky to get uh, the uh, Philippines uh, Secretary of National Defense speaking to us, even on video, but we are luckier to have Lieutenant General Greg Bilton uh, all the way from Australia. Coincidence, he's here uh, for, for this entire week and uh, readily agreed to uh, come and join us here and share some of his thoughts. So let me begin with you, General, and your Chief of Joint Operations, which uh, indicates that you, know, you interact and uh, deal with all the three forces in Australia itself. But more than that, I want to widen the scope of the uh, discussion and ask you, that in the Indo-Pacific is now the uh, theater which everybody is uh, watching, uh, where we are going, how the collaborations are happening. So what are your thoughts on uh, collaboration and cooperation between different countries or major stakeholders in the Indo-Pacific itself? Yeah, so firstly, thank you so much for the opportunity to come and speak today. I'd, I'd like to just take the opportunity to acknowledge the award to uh, Lieutenant General Shikat Kedkar, Kedkar, yes. uh, just to congratulate him uh, and acknowledge his extraordinary career and equally thank you for being here. Look, um, from my perspective, the strategic circumstances uh, in our region in the Indo-Pacific have uh, absolutely forced Australia to focus more, um, more closely here. Uh, we did have uh, quite significant interest in the Middle East and contributing to operations for about 20 years through Afghanistan and Iraq, and there's been an absolute pivot to this this region, and it's principally uh, you know Chinese militarisation of the region, uh, it's uh, Chinese expansionism, uh, not just in uh, inside the first island chain, but now deep into Southeast Asia and into the Indian Ocean, and equally into the Southwest Pacific. So we've been um, quite closely focused on that. Uh, we're interested in how in, how that's developed. We're also, frankly, deeply interested in working with partners to uphold the rules-based order. And I guess, in a, from an Australian perspective, we can't uh, deter major powers on our own, but we absolutely believe the formula is to have trusted, transparent relationships with partners and allies that enable us to push back on bad behaviours where they occur. And that's, that's what really fundamentally drives our strategy. That's true, absolutely. Indo-Pacific, therefore, is the new focus, as I mentioned. Admiral Tripathi, uh, you head Check. the uh, sword arm of the Indian Navy. You've been Director General or Director General uh, Naval Operations, so you're aware. And recently, you did meet General Bilton in Australia when you went there. Uh, from your perspective or from India's perspective, uh, what is the uh, focus or what should be the focus for India and Indian Navy in particular on the Indo-Pacific? And I'll come to the Indian Navy, uh, the Indian Ocean part of it a little later, but Indo-Pacific, when you look at it, large perspective, what should it be? Uh, thank you, Nitin. Can you hear me all? Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Thanks a lot, Nidun, first of all, uh, for my maiden appearance uh, in your uh, show. Uh, it is like, you know, uh, all of you must have watched this famous comedy uh, show, the, uh, the, uh, comedy, uh, the Kapil Sharma show, and all the participants who are arriving there for the first time. I'm getting the same feeling, you know, that you uh, finally have arrived in your show. So, th so thank you very much for uh, <laughs> you know, inviting you. me. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I think this is a great platform. First of all, I must compliment you, uh, where you know uh, the users, uh, the uh, academia, the R&D people, the uh, uh, people who are making uh, the arms and ammunition, including uh, practitioners, a strategist, and you get a, a good bouquet of uh, you know uh, personnel to come and participate, share their ideas. Uh, for the larger good of everybody who is here. So, uh, congratulations uh, to you. Thank you. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, General Shekatkar. Uh, he is, of course, uh, as you brought out everything and more. So, congratulations to him. I want to take on, uh, or rather take off, from where uh, uh, General Shekatkar left, and he uh, mentioned about this uh, 70, 80, 90 uh, rule. And because I am a naval officer, <laughs> it, it is largely for the maritime domain. There are two more things in that. That is 66 and 99. And the 66 is that uh, it says that uh, the 66% of global wealth comes from or near the coastal areas. Absolutely. And 99% of uh, internet or da data traffic actually pass from the undersea cables, which pass through the uh, oceans, crisscrossing uh, everybody, including Indian Indo-Pacific region. So having said that, uh, Indo-Pacific uh, is a huge area. Absolutely. And I want to just uh, uh, put some uh, statistics uh, uh, to support my claim. Uh, you know, it is, it is uh, home to 65% of world's population. Sure. It is also, uh, hope it, it, it almost contains 56 littoral states combined. If you add France and uh, British Indian owned ocean territories, that makes 58 nations. And, and I'm talking of littoral nations not the uh, people who don't have the coastal areas. Six continents, except one continent, you know, which I'm talking about, which is not there. Uh, both oceans combined uh, covered 46% of Earth's surface area. 46% of sur Earth's surface area. And the Pacific Ocean itself is so huge that the whole land mass can actually fit into the Pacific Ocean. So that is the enormity of the area which we are talking about, Indo-Pacific. Indo-Pacific has got different connotations for different countries. Uh, we are very clear in, our, in India. Our Prime Minister has very clearly enunciated uh, that for us, it is from east coast of Africa to the west coast of continental US. In lateral vein, it is from Kilimanjaro to California and everything in between. So that is the enormity uh, of the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, what it means for the uh, Indian Navy is that we in the Indian Navy are very clear that we have got the capability and uh, we have got the intent to deploy our forces wherever our national maritime interests take us. And we have demonstrated this time and again, whether it was during COVID, whether it, uh, uh, it was during, uh, during any uh, you know, human evacuations from war-torn areas, uh, uh, whether it is deploying our ships to South China Sea and beyond and up to continental US, you would remember last year uh, on the uh, Independence Day, we had seven ships in all the continents on 15th August. Yeah. So we are very clear in the Indian Navy that uh, Indo-Pacific region is of great importance uh, for uh, our trade, for the world's trade, uh, for the global commons, and uh, uh, all the policy uh, intent which has been uh, you know, enunciated by our leaders are uh, uh, support this, that uh, just to quote Dr. Jay Shankar, that we don't want to grow alone. Uh, we want to take everybody uh, and all, all to grow. So the Navy actually goes uh, uh, or is driven by the policy directives given by, uh, by the government, and we are ready and should to. That's an excellent uh, roundup of uh, what uh, Indo-Pacific is. Uh, the statistics are staggering. And in that context, India and Australia, uh, of late for a decade or so, uh, their uh, bilateral defense cooperation has really gone several notches up. Uh, and uh, as we can see, uh, these, there are several aspects to it. Of course, Navy is uh, the major part of it, but even the Army and the Air Force have also now jointly exercised in various settings. 
and what do you see what do you foresee going forward because you are chief of joint operations what do you foresee uh, the next step for india australia bilateral defense relationship yes yeah, so um firstly what i'd say is that uh, our interest intersect initially in the indian ocean and many people today have already talked about sea lines of communication strategic trade routes uh the logic is obvious but it's where in the first instance our interests meet uh it's where we do uh naval and maritime air uh activity together i would argue we're at a point of our relationship where we uh deconflict and make each other aware of the activities we're doing but we're not yet at a point where we coordinate our activities in the indian ocean and in other parts of the indo pacific my view is that there's an opportunity to perhaps start to coordinate our activity leverage off the resources of both our nations to be able to achieve better levels of situational awareness one of the key factors that has helped us deliver and grow the relationship in the way we have is the sharing of intelligence and information and uh since november last year uh my headquarters has provided 31 dossiers of intelligence relating to activities in the Indian Ocean through our defense attache into the Indian military system that's okay i'd like to get to a point though where i could provide it directly to a operational headquarters from one operational headquarters to the other so i guess what i'm uh offering here is an opportunity to operationalize our relationship uh we we technically deconflict and we make each other aware of what we're doing uh there's an opportunity here to get to a more sophisticated level i think the appetites there as well and it's really about sharing transparency and sharing information and situational awareness that builds trust and we've been doing that for a while in each of the domains we've exercised um specifically to build tactical interoperability what i would say is in the maritime domain where the most sophisticated so our oz index exercise which is principally a naval exercise or a maritime exercise in fact incorporates incorporates subsurface surface and air operations uh where uh we provide forces uh p8s if you like surface vessels uh submarines and we work together uh on exercise to build up that tactical interoperability that is where we've reached the most sophisticated level in terms of comparable uh capability and then in the land special forces space and uh equally our air forces are growing at a similar rate but they're not at the same level yet as we are in the maritime domain uh cyber and space also offer offers opportunities to further enhance our efforts together so i think we've got a platform it's rock solid it's something to uh continue to launch from and uh certainly my week here is about seeking opportunities to make our relationship more sophisticated as i've described thanks i think uh, that that's where it's very well put that you have a platform you need to build on it and as you go forward may make it more sophisticated and make it uh, maybe real time actionable intelligence uh, which can be put into action or can be acted upon is what you're looking at going forward is from what i can understand yeah so planned activity but equally an ability to respond dynamically to changing circumstances so once you've got tactical interoperability it does give you the flexibility then to meet just by coincidence in a certain location something's happening around you and because we're familiar with each other we can respond to that and act in a coordinated way together that's very powerful and it's a magnificent deterrent when you get it right absolutely in fact australia is at the other end of the indian ocean and uh, like you mentioned for india the indo pacific is from east coast of africa to the other side in the western pacific uh, admiral tripathi you had as i said at the beginning uh, the sword arm of the indian navy uh, as far as indian ocean is concerned i think uh, you i think if the indian navy can uh, have full uh, visibility on the indian ocean activities of all kinds not just uh, military but non military and uh, non traditional security threats and australia can keep a watch on uh, their area of uh, operations 
and if that can be combined, I think that would be a great uh, way forward, roadmap ahead for the cooperation between the two countries. Absolutely, not only uh, uh, India and Australia, but all countries. Uh, but uh, I just want to flag one issue that uh, India-Australia uh, relationship, and I'm talking of uh, military domain because that is where uh, uh, we're talking this uh, yes. discussion. I think it's near peak. Can we rest on our laurels? Uh, no. I think there is much uh, more to be done. And as brought out by the general, the, we are working towards that. Uh, you uh, brought out, I was uh, in the east coast of uh, Australia, Sydney for Malabar. And uh, we had many uh, uh, closed door discussions. Uh, I just want to tell you the, uh, uh, the importance which uh, India attaches to Australia. Uh, we had two ships uh, all the way going uh, to the east coast of Australia, Sydney. And at the same time, one of our submarines from uh, the west coast of India was, in the way of, was at the west coast of uh, Australia. And that's what it made a deployment of a submarine to Australia. So uh, a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, dialogue is happening at various levels, uh, uh, from ministerial level down up to the operational and uh, the technical level. And uh, I can only see that uh, this relationship will go further and further and uh, for the benefit uh, of both countries. As far as the Indian Ocean per se is concerned, uh, uh, it is an important ocean. Many experts have predicted that the destinies uh, or destiny of 21st century uh, will be decided what happens in Indian Ocean. And uh, uh, I think what, what last 20 years have, uh, have shown uh, goes to prove at least some of it we have still got, uh, you know, uh, four-fifths of the century to go ahead. But in uh, 21st century, it is the Indian Ocean which will play the major role uh, for simple reason that uh, it is uh, the geography which decides. The entire world trade, the number of choke points which we have got, the kind of uh, traffic which goes, goes through, uh, the, uh, the shift in geopolitics, all that is happening here. And uh, as is the, my wont, I always uh, say, and I've been saying for some years now, that we are, what we are witnessing right now is uh, that uh, the geopolitics, uh, technology, and in security domain, tactics, all are in a state of flux right now. And this is happening unconcurrently. And this is happening after a long time. I can't put a fix as to after how much, how much but all are in a state of flux at the same time. So we are indeed living in interesting times and uh, uh, we'll have to wait and watch how the security situation unfolds in the Indian Ocean region. As far as the Navy is concerned, I can tell you, uh, uh, Nitin, that Indian Navy is keeping a watch, very close watch as to what is happening. And we are partnering with all our uh, uh, friendly foreign countries because we do believe that uh, the only way forward is uh, cooperation through collaboration consensus and communication. And that is what we're doing with all our uh, partner countries, including Australia, because we also believe no one country has got the capacity and capability to keep the sea lines of ocean open at all times. That's the convergence that we have spoken about right at the beginning. And I think it fits in very well with uh, Bharat Shakti's uh, theme right from the beginning from 2016, where uh, we started off with a line, cooperation and collaboration in the uh, security domain. And that's why the core of the audience here has always been the foreign defense attaches. Uh, today, about 75 or 74 of them from different countries in this region and outside this region are here. Uh, obviously, they will have lots of takeaways from what both of you said in terms of how one country cannot really uh, secure, uh, secure the sea lanes of communication or even the, uh, the vast expanse of Indo-Pacific. But thank you very much, uh, both of you, for those uh, insights and thoughts. Uh, and thank you for joining us at such short notice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Nitin. Thank you so much, Nitin. Uh, will you please present mementos to our panelists? To Lieutenant General Greg Bilton, yes. Chief of Joint Operations Australia, and Vice Admiral Dinesh Tripathi, CNC Western Naval Command, Indian Navy. Thank you very much. And now let's quickly dive into the first knowledge session of the India Defence Conclave. 
Building India's Defense Future, Role of Indian Companies. I would like to invite the session chair and moderator first, after which I will in, uh, introduce and call out the panelists one by one. So we're going to have two back-to-back -back knowledge sessions uh, before we head into another tea break. Uh, so 